Well, hey, welcome back to Job with Jeff this morning. I hope you have your beverage. I've got mine this morning, some coffee, as well as your Bible. Hope you have that with you as well. Um, I'm going to look at a character in the Bible really fast uh, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 17. If you have your Bible or you need to hit pause, go ahead and turn there. 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah. Maybe you're familiar with Elijah, but this is a guy whose life was up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't know if you've ever experienced that in your life. I know I have. I'm probably pretty certain that you have too. You've had mountaintop experiences, you've had valleys, and that is Elijah's life and living color. He's a prophet of God. He's the only one left for God. And he has these moments of miracles. He's a spokesperson for God. He tells uh, the people exactly what the Lord wants him to know. And, and he, he has this episode where he's fed by ravens in chapter 17. And then he has this encounter with a widow. And uh, the widow uh, supplies a little bit that ends up feeding Elijah. And along the course of that, if you get to chapter 17, verse 17, sometime later the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. And he grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing so the son of this widow died and Elijah came along and uh, calls out to the Lord in verse 22 and the Lord hears him the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived so Elijah by calling out to God sees the boy come back to life he's resurrected incredible I mean if that happened to you you would remember it it would be a mountaintop experience and then the Lord came to him a time later and said, hey, you need to go to Ahab, the king, and let him know that we're going to have a little contest. And maybe you're familiar with this story on Mount Carmel. And that's what happens next in chapter 18. So a really quick version of that is it's Elijah versus 450 prophets, uh, false prophets of Baal and others. And, and they have a little contest to build some altars to find out who the one true God is. And they worship around this altar and do crazy things. And it almost actually turns demonic and nuts. And they knock down the altar. And Elijah finally says, time's up, my turn. And he rebuilds the altar. He offers a sacrifice to the Lord. He calls on the Lord. And as soon as he says the word, fire comes out of heaven, blows up the altar. And all of a sudden now, uh, he shows that God is the one true God and he's his prophet. Another mountaintop experience, literally on Mount Carmel. You would think that Elijah was on cloud nine. He just saw a resurrection from a boy. He's now the one true prophet. God shows up and destroys his other prophets. You would think everything would be great, except Ahab's wife, Jezebel, wants to kill Elijah. And that puts Elijah on the move. He starts running away. And here's what happens coming off that mountaintop experience in chapter 19. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah and said, May the gods deal with me. But it, even so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. So Jezebel is coming after Elijah because Ahab, her husband, who didn't have the guts to stand up to her, told her all about this stuff. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran. What? Elijah just saw the widow's son rise from the grave. Elijah just saw 450 prophets of Baal to get destroyed by God. But he's afraid of this woman. So he runs to Beersheba in southern Israel in Judah. He left his servant there. And he calls out to God, and here's what it says. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm not better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under a tree and fell asleep. Elijah, who's had these mountaintop experiences with the Lord, where the Lord has come through to resurrect a boy, to be supplied through a widow, to see the 400 prophets of Baal destroyed. God came through, and yet he's fearful of this one woman who's chasing him and wants to kill him. And he says to God in his prayer life, Lord, take my life now. Kill me now. I'm terrified. Isn't this incredible? 
I mean, but we do this in our own lives. We have these mountaintop experiences with the Lord. We look out the window at how beautiful the sky is and the clouds and rain and animals and mountains and streams. And we see how faithful He's been in the past and, and, and we rejoice. But then something hard happens in our lives and we turn around and we curse God. And we say, I can't believe it, Lord. Take my life now. I'm terrified again. We go through these peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. But the reality is, through all of this, that the Lord was with Elijah. And that's what normally happens all the time. The Lord appears to Elijah in the middle of chapter 19, starting in verse 10. Elijah says, I've been zealous for you, Lord, but take my life. In verse 11, the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. So the point is that God is with us through the valleys. God is with us on the mountain peaks. God is with you now. He's with us all the time. He's faithful all the time, even though we are like this emotionally and we are like this with our thinking and our motives and our sinful behavior. But God is faithful all the way through. I hope that's encouraging you today. Would you remember that God is faithful? He's present with you today, no matter what you're going through, even though we go through this roller coaster of emotions all the time. God doesn't. God's faithful. So have a great day today.